Hi everyone, this is Britt Simon. Um, I've produced videos before to help people do their DV lottery entry, um, but this year I wanted to record a DV 2023 entry um, and do it fairly fast so that those of you that are pretty confident uh, with your own details, etc., perhaps don't need all the details, can watch this video, which will be fairly quick. We'll just do a quick um, process. Um, if you do want to watch a more detailed video that has a bit more information about qualifications and that sort of thing, how to do your photo, um, that will be in the description below it, the YouTube video, and I'll try and make the links pop up in the video as well. Um, and so uh, there's also some other videos. Uh, there's a very important video there about how to avoid the four most common mistakes. Uh, go have a look at that one. Uh, there's a video about the photo tool. Uh, and um, uh, there's a couple of videos that would help you out with your entry. But this one's going to be a fast video. Um, so let's get into it. Let's uh, uh, let's show you how to do the entry. Uh, and um, good luck with your entry this year. Okay. All right. So as you can see here, I'm at the DV Lottery page. Um, and I'm going to be able to, uh, to enter this uh, page for you. Uh, let me just switch into that. Okay. Um, so we're at dvprogram.state.gov. That's the only place you should be uh, using. And I'm going to assume that you've read the DV 2023 instructions. I'm going to assume that you've got photos ready to go. Okay. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and begin the entry. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is you have to enter this capture. Um, so you have to enter whatever uh, data it shows there for you to, to enter. Um, and then I want you to go through this process and give the details correctly. Um, so you, you're first of all going to start off with your uh, with your last name. Let's get the caps right here, right? So um, it doesn't really matter if you put this all in capitals or or you know whatever. It doesn't. That's not going to affect you. Um, so I'm going to assume that I'm going to say uh, Simon Britton is my name. I've got no middle name. If I had a middle name, I could put that in here. Um, but uh, in for this example, I'm just going to keep it real simple. No middle name. I'm going to choose male. I'm going to put my date of birth. Uh, let's see. And it's going to be a month, day, year format. So be careful with that. Uh, so, for example, if you're born on the 26th of May, you'd put 05, uh, 26. And then let's assume your 1984 is your date of birth. Okay. So um, be careful not to do it the other way around. Don't do, like in some countries, 26, 05, 1984. It's, it's showing you here it wants the month, the day, then the year. Okay. City where you were born, um, I'm going to put Paris. I'm not French, but let's just uh, pick that. You could put birth city unknown, but I would not suggest uh, you do that if you can um, pick the city that you feel is, is correct. So then getting into some important questions. First thing is the country where you were born. Now, this is really important. Your eligibility, uh, your eligibility for the lottery is based on your country of birth. OK, so you need to choose this correctly. Um, and almost in all circumstances, this is going to be the way people will ent enter. It doesn't matter whether you uh, now live in Germany or you live in, you know, Morocco or wherever you live, it doesn't matter where you live today, and it doesn't matter uh, whether you uh, have another citizenship. What they're asking here is the country where you were born. Okay, so I've put Paris, that's in France, that's the country where I was, I was born. Then number six is um, country of eligibility for the DV program, and very few of you should be doing anything with this box, okay? Because if your country is eligible, the country of birth, if your country of birth is eligible, that's what you should use. In a few circumstances, you might find your country of birth is not eligible, and you might be able to charge to your spouse's country of birth, um, or you might be able to pick your, your parents' country of birth, um, but that's an exceptional circumstance, and I suggest you watch the other video for that, okay? So just for this, I'm just going to assume that no, my country um, of eligibility is going to be the same as my country of birth. Okay, so I, I really want most of you to focus on that. In which case, you can say, are you claiming eligibility on the country where you were born? You say yes, very simple. 
if you did have to um, enter this with a different country and you were picking some other country, you would have to put that in there. And, you know, they're, they're asking you to explain that as well. But um, honestly, it's best to it's best to pick your country of birth. OK, um, and then uh, you, you're going to be asked some details about your passport. Um, so it's going to ask again for the name, the first name, uh, no middle name. I'm going to say the passport number here. Let's say it starts with next. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So possibly that might be acceptable. I don't know uh, the the format for uh, French passports, but we'll see. And the passport expiration date, let's just pick a, a date in the future. Now, the passport must be current on the day that you enter the lottery. It doesn't matter if it expires a day later or a year later or a month later. As long as it's valid and non-expired on the day you enter the lottery, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to pick here, uh, let's say it, this, it um, expires in 12.01.2021, um, right? Absolutely no problem that that passport is shortly going to expire. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, and the country of issuance for uh, my case, I'm going to just make this real simple, would be France. Um, let's pick that. Okay, so I'm most of the way through here. Um, you can try and claim a passport ex exemption, but don't do this simply because you don't have a passport, uh, it's not renewed, you know, something like that. It needs to be a proper ex exception basis, right? You're either stateless with no nationality, and very few of you are state stateless, but some will be, a national of a communist controlled country and unable to obtain a passport from the government, Again, very, very rare. Um, and then unable to obtain a passport and have received an individual uh, waiver of the passport requirement. No, you haven't. You haven't received an individual waiver. So that's almost nobody should be ticking that, that you know, um, choosing that last option. Okay. So generally speaking, put in your passport number and make sure that's, um, uh, that that's valid. Okay. We're going to choose a passport photo. I've got some photos here. Um, so we're just going to choose your photo and I've assumed that you've read the photo instructions or watched my video and the photo that you're choosing is a 600 pixel by 600 pixel photo uh, and you're good to go. You're ready to, to enter that. Okay. Mailing address. Um, this is your current mailing address. Okay. So you can put uh, one, two, three, any street, whatever is your current mailing address, right? Uh, and we'll say that that's in Paris. It isn't, of course, but whatever. Um, we'll say no for that. Postcode, we, you know, I don't know if they've got postcodes in France. We'll just try that. Um, and if there was no postcode, I could actually just say no postcode. Let's try that in case it tries to validate, okay? But put your actual current address, your mailing address, in your, um, your form here. And then, uh, again, it's asking for the country. I'm going to pick France and the country where you live today. Again, we're going to say France. Why are they asking for this all the time? Well, you could be temporarily abroad, right? You live in France, but perhaps you're on business in Alaska, right? Or you're in Germany or wherever you might be. Okay, so um, the, this is uh, your address as of today, but it's also asking the country where you live today, okay, as opposed to the regular country. Okay, you can optionally put your phone number in. There's no need to, so I wouldn't even bother. Uh, me at uh, Gmail. Oh, let's, let's put yahoo.com. Um, and we'll put, do it again. Me at yahoo.com. Okay, so we've put an email address in there. Real, real simple, real quick. Choose um, the option here. Now, don't get too hung up on this. This, this option you're about to choose here does not affect your uh, your selection. So you could put in there, for example, high school, no degree, and you're still going to get uh, the same chance as anyone else to be picked. This education you pick here does not affect your chance to, uh, to be picked, okay? Current marital status. Very, very important you get this right. If you get this wrong, you will be disqualified, okay? So... Um, most of you are going to be picking unmarried, meaning you're single, uh, and you've never been married. You're not divorced. You've never been married, etc. 
um, or you're married, right? Some of you will be picking divorced or possibly widowed. Very few of you will pick legally separated. Legal separation is a process that you go through in a court, okay? And so very few of you have done that. If you're living apart from your spouse because you're planning to divorce, but you're not divorced yet, that is not the same as legal separation, okay? So be very careful about that. And again, if you're confused about any of that, watch the longer version of this video, uh, which is linked below, okay? Um, so I'm going to say I'm married and my spouse is not a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident. And so therefore, I'm going to have to provide my spouse's details, okay? Um, so, and the number of children, I'm going to say I've got one child. So I'm going to continue. Now, because I've said I'm married and because I've said I've got a child, it expects me, the form will expect me to fill in the spouse's name and the child's name, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to have to do that. So my spouse's name, we're going to say is Mary Britton, um, and she's got no first name. We'll come up with a, um, a, a date of birth for her, let's say December 25th, uh, 1985. She's a little bit younger than me, but you'll see the photo in a minute. I don't think so. Um, okay, so she's female, city where she was born. Let's say she was also born in Paris. Country where spouse was born, she was born in France. Um, spouse photograph, choose another photo and uh, we'll pick this photo, slightly uh, older looking lady. <laughs> and then we need the child's name. Let's say we've got, uh, uh, again, the child's name would be another Briton, uh, another person with the same last name there. Well, let's say her name is Jane. Let's say she's got, uh, let's say she is Jane Mary. Um, and let's get a, a birth, date of birth for her. Let's say she was also born on December 25th, but she was born in 2010, okay? Whoops, 10. Okay, so you can see how that goes. She's female. Uh, city where she was born, we'll say Paris. Uh, we'll pick a country, that's gonna be France. Okay, and we're gonna cho choose a photo. And we've got a photo there. Okay, so we've done the entry for the spouse, we've done the entry for uh, the child, we've put their addresses in, uh, sorry, their date of birth and their um, country of birth, etc. Okay, so um, my entry actually uh, failed right there. It, the internet connection, I guess, must have dropped, something like that, but I re-entered everything uh, pretty quickly. I've perhaps put slightly different details in, but I've now gone to the same place. And you can see that I've got all of my data in there. Um, it's basically allowing me to check all of the information, the address, uh, you know, all of the email address, the choices I've made. So I could actually uh, take a copy of all of this if I, if I wanted to. Um, but uh, but this, is a, this entry is, is fully ready to go. So I can submit this now, and um, it says actually to print this page for your records. That's probably a good idea. So I can print that to a PDF, and let's say um, save that, and we'll put uh, DP 2023 entry. I would recommend you do this. This is a good idea um, to actually have that. Um, and then, uh, and then go ahead and submit the entry. Now, when you get the entry, um, you can see I've successfully submitted. I've got my, um, my code here, which is, this is my entry code, the confirmation number. Um, and it's got the information I'm going to need later. This is really important information. So what I suggest you do is take a, a, another print of this, print this to PDF, okay? and save and we'll put um entry confirmation okay and so i've got that data and if if i wanted to i could also take this data and send it to myself um in an email so that i have that data okay so i would recommend you do both those things print it out to pdf take a screenshot with you know with your computer take a photo of it with your phone, whatever you need to do, okay? 
um, and you know, make sure you've got this data because you will need this data later. Don't give anybody else this information. This is your private information. Um, this confirmation number you will need later, so please keep it safe. You won't need this number, but you'll need those three bits of information there. Okay, um, so that's it. That's how you um, that's how you you uh, do your entry. Uh, let's just go back to Streamyard. Um, nope, no, should be able to get rid of that. Yeah, um, and that's that's how you create your entry. Okay, so um, I hope that was useful to you. I know I didn't give very many details uh, going through that, but the purpose of this video was just to make it fast so that I could, you know, help you do your entry and maybe you feel more confident now entering your details. It's a pretty simple process. You don't need to pay anyone for this. When in the middle of my process it broke, I went back and re-entered. It took me about three minutes maybe. So if you've got your name and address and all of those things, if you've got your photos ready, it really is a very quick process. It doesn't take long at all, okay? But do take a bit of care with it. Um, make sure you don't make mistakes, okay? All right, everybody, good luck. Thank you for listening in. And um, uh, we'll hopefully speak to you in May when you've been selected uh, as a winner. Uh, and we'll see how that goes, all right? Okay, everyone, good night.